Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center. The text is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Matthew, the second chapter. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and old Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the Magi secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star which they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And they saw the star. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We hear today about the Magi, as in multiple mages. They are pagans, Gentiles, heathen stargazers from the east, probably from Babylon and Persia. And yet, as our collect says today, God makes his Son known to these Magi. He brings them from their foolish magic and superstition into true wisdom, and so makes them truly wise men. We are used to hearing that they were led by the star to Jerusalem, but Matthew doesn't quite say that. Rather, they saw the star in the east when it rose, and they came. The star, this mysterious sign, cannot take them to Jesus. Far from giving them the answers, the star is what prompts the Magi to ask questions. How did they understand a king is born from this star? They could not do that without some kind of word, some sort of promise that they could trust and follow. Thus, these magi must have shown their wisdom already in Babylon, found in some scrap of another people's scriptures left over from ancient times, the annals of Daniel, once the prefect over the mages of their order, a man of mere legend by now, but one who would have left them Numbers 24, that reluctant oracle of Balaam. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Edom shall be dispossessed and one from Jacob shall exercise dominion. Jacob and Esau, Israel and Edom. That could only point to one logical place, Jerusalem. But did the Magi think that Herod was this king? Or did they know that Herod was really neither king nor Israelite, but one of these Edomites, a descendant of Esau? Did they recognize Herod was the one to be dispossessed by the Christ? 
that he was just a placeholder to fulfill Genesis 49, that the scepter would not depart from Judah until Shiloh, that is, Messiah, comes. Herod certainly must have known it, because he was not thrown off at all by their question, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Herod inquires, where is the Christ to be born? And his priests know right where to look. Micah 5, 2, the one and the only verse that tells this. Although it was news to the Magi because they didn't have access to Micah. But here at last is something that can be believed, something that gives them an answer. That something is God's Word, the Holy Scriptures. The Christ will be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And these magi believe that promise. They set out to worship him with faith that receives God's promises and clings to them, follows them even. Signs like the star are not the thing itself. That curvy road-ahead sign doesn't teach you how to steer your car. It only says, watch out. But God wishes to deal with us in no other way than by his external word where he promises to be for us, certainly. The Magi didn't exactly know what the star meant or where it should lead them, but it got them off their Persian rugs into the scriptures and onto their camels. It stirred them to look for the answers where they could be found in God's word. And that is the part of Herod's speaking that they were glad to listen to and obey. May it be the same then with whatever stirs us up, whatever signs we think we see or feel in life. God's answers are not coming in swirls of coffee creamer or burnt into the side of your toast. They aren't found either in who lives or who dies or who happens to be sitting in the palace now. Rather, we are to run on to the promises of God in Christ in His Holy Scriptures. And we ought to do this all the more whenever in this world we see signs that are deadly, that are inexplicable, or that are terrible. Heed also the warning in this Epiphany text. Herod's court so much more than these magi knew wisdom because they had the Holy Scriptures from birth for generations. To the Jews belong all the promises. They even knew how to use their Bibles, how to get some answers like where the Christ would be born. And yet at the very same time that these magi are being made into wise men by God's Word, these already enlightened Jews became blind heathens. Knowing all the answers, they believed none of them. They would not journey even a few miles to greet their own Savior. God forbid that we would look for Him anywhere but where He has promised to be. But God also keep us from despising His Word by taking it for granted. The sign cannot get it done. Rather, it must make a detour so that God's Word can be heard. And this is how the Lord always brings Gentiles into the promises that belong to His Israel. He makes us fellow heirs, partakers of the promised in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. The gospel is not our own possession by ownership or privilege, but it is ours because we have received it as a gift of God's grace by His words. The mystery which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations has now been revealed to His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery of God the Word of God, rather, is where the mystery of salvation and all answers are revealed.
and they are yes and amen in Jesus Christ, through whom we also have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Blessed Epiphany, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the Reverend Stephen and Cynthia Schumacher who serve the Lord in Ghana. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.